Yeah, so I grew up in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, I was born in a family uh, that adored the Lord and <laughs> raised us in a Deuteronomy 6 fashion, where every Sunday um, we were certainly in church. Uh, every evening our parents would read the Bible to us after dinner. Um, they would pray with us. They discipled us in the home very well. Uh, my dad, I grew up in Grace Bible Church for what it's worth, and my dad was a deacon growing up. Uh, my mom served on the music team, so <laughs> we were there every time the doors were open. Um, I can't remember a Sunday in which I wasn't at church. However, uh, even though we were there for, uh, I grew up in that environment, it wasn't until my seventh grade year that uh, the Lord began to work in my heart. So uh, I don't have a, uh, a testimony that's, you know, I hit rock bottom and um, I was indulging in all the world's passions and pleasures and the Lord gripped me um, out of that. I don't have a story like that. In fact, my testimony is more of like the dawning of a morning sun, um, to put it a little bit uh, comically. Having grown up in Tulsa in a Bible-believing home and in a Christian school, um, there was not a lot that I was exposed to. In God's providence, I wasn't exposed to a lot. That's a good thing. Um, yet when I went to college, I was certainly blindsided by just how sinful the world is. And so, yeah, the, the desire for, um, for power, for status, the all-consumingness of, uh, of sex and everything else um, was very prevalent and it was everywhere. In the midst of being in the world and feeling all the pulls and pushes of the world towards sin, um, I had friends at church and um, on campus uh, who helped keep me accountable um, through praying for me, uh, through calling me out on my sin, um, through asking me how I was doing, if I was hiding secret sins, things like that. And that was tremendously helpful for me in my growth uh, because I couldn't hide. <laughs> in uh, 2020, right before COVID hit in January, uh, I ended up uh, at University Baptist Church in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Um, in March of 2020, COVID hit. I lost all of my friends, um, and I was in a, tr a new church environment, <laughs> and uh, I, had, I was feeling particularly lonely um, through some difficult seasons of college that happened and in, in my church setting. Um, I heard God's Word preached uh, faithfully. I saw pastors that cared for us nobly in a uh, 1 Timothy 3.1 kind of way. Uh, I found church members that understood in a deeper sense what it meant to be church members. They shepherded me for the last few years. Um, I've grown there uh, in my desire to be a pastor. Um, I've been discipled well. Um, I, I was married there to my wife, uh, Anna. Um, in the last few recent years, I've done um, uh, the pastoral residency that they have there, which is a year-long program where, much like doctors, uh, in a residency, we read a ton, <laughs> uh, learned a lot about what it means to be a pastor, a lot of the theology of that. Over the last few years at UBC, I've been uh, completing seminary pastorally training. I've been married and I've worked there in both the youth and college ministries. Um, and I've also done some membership equipping and discipling as well. Um, so if I could sum up my faith uh, in my life, I would say that uh, I share a very similar story to our elder brother, uh, Timothy, who we learn in 2 Timothy 1 and 3, was raised um, with a godly mother and godly grandmother who was trained in the word and trained in the gospel. There were, there were marks of regeneration uh, in my life, even as a seventh grader, even as a, as a young kid. Uh, so one of the marks of regeneration was that I, did not, I no longer desired to be angry at my siblings. I used to have terrible tantrums and fits of anger. I was easily provoked. Um, and after becoming a believer, I no longer desired to be provoked. It was harder to get, you know, get under my skin. I certainly still struggled as many, uh, as many preteens might, um, but anger was something that no longer consumed me like it did before. When I was not a believer, uh, my friends were not the best influences around me. I could, in good conscience, uh, unfortunately laugh at many of their jokes. I could engage in a lot of the conversations that they had that were not even remotely Christian. Um, but after I became a believer, I no longer desired to be around the world. I just, I was fed up with many of those things. You know, as First John 3 talks about, like loving Christians is a huge mark of a believer. Um, and that's one of the marks of assurance is that you love other Christians rather than the world. And so I'd say that anger uh, no longer controlling me 
and a love for other believers were the two biggest marks of regeneration in my life. 